Developing a good communication strategy is rarely an endeavor of a single person. Let's say you're a junior communications officer with no prior experience in professional communications, working in a small project with hardly any communication support from head office. Then you will have to think about your communications team in a broader sense. Who of your project members has to do with communicating along those strategic priorities you've set? Try to get these individuals on board of your virtual communications team. This can also include people who are not staff of your project, like people from other departments or some of your stakeholders. You could also call this team a task force or something less fancy or less institutionalized if that is more to the liking of your boss. The point is the members are only providing limited inputs to your project's communications. Maybe you can entice them with some extra exposure for their field of work or for themselves as experts. People are looking for opportunities to advance their careers. It's a totally legit motivation. Make use of that. Remember, again, communications is the vehicle for your project to convey its objectives and to build relationships with the audience. This means you have to begin with your project's goals and for that you need to ensure that you have the so-called subject matter experts factored into your broader communications team. Identifying the right subject matter experts and working with them early on in the process will save you time when it comes to the implementation of your communication strategy. They can be advisors in your organization or external consultants who you should get on contract from anywhere basically, but contact them early. Why do you need to get experts on board? Well, firstly, because your audience wants to hear from people with special knowledge and development organizations have plenty of those experts anyway. So what do you have to watch out for with the experts? It's important that your experts help inform what you plan to say in your communication. Well, this is no minor point. Development Corporation is full of staff with academic titles and sometimes you get the impression that experts are allowed liberties like in university. You will need to write a clear brief what you want and need of them. Not to rein in their opinions, nothing like that. It's more to make sure that you have the content that covers the ground that you need to be covered. So if your experts draft complete articles for, for you, the whole thing, make sure that he or she understands that the final editorial decisions will not be with them. However, also clarify that you won't distort their arguments. Assure them that you will show them all the edits to their content. You will work together until all disagreements are reconciled and everyone is happy with the content and the outcome. You might want to be ready for some lengthy going back and forth with them. Sometimes there will be even substantial friction. Be prepared for it and understand that the outcome will gain a lot from this frictionous process. Sometimes it turns out that the initial frictions point you to important issues in the argumentation that need fixing. So overall, also remember that technical advisors often don't have the audience in mind so much. Factual correctness is more important to them. You will have to find a way to reconcile both, but don't back off too easily. I know it's difficult because you feel the experts are more senior and you are on the slippery slope here. They have their expertise on the content and you have yours in delivering it to the intended recipients. Both needs to work, otherwise there will be no effective communication taking place. Secondly, hearing from experts will lend to the credibility of your strategy. Often people want to hear from several different voices before they go along with what's being said in your content. So think of maybe more than just one content. So if your communication strategy includes various perspectives, all echoing the same thing, you are far more likely to convey information effectively and compel your audience to action. Often it even helps 
with overall credibility to include voices that are critical of your activities. However, this approach needs a bit more savvy and experience, and it's not something project leads and development cooperation are used to. So we'll leave this for another mini course, and until then I suggest you don't bring it up with your boss. Okay. Think who else needs to be in your wider communications team. It might make sense to have someone on board who knows about legal issues, copyright, data privacy, the rights of children when featured in visuals. These are issues often taken a bit too lightly in development cooperation. Lightly in the sense that people make decisions on it that don't have professional knowledge about the subjects. And again, think further. Who else in your organization might have something important to communicate or can help you implement your plan more effectively. You might think getting all these people to spend their time on your project is difficult. Nobody has time for anything but their own project nowadays. My experience is though that people enjoy being asked for advice. When you do it right, it's a way to show them your appreciation. But don't do it too late. Nobody likes to feel like an afterthought, especially when in their eyes there's no more chance to really change the procedure. You don't want to hear, hey, if you had asked me earlier, now it's a bit late, hey? One more point on the seniority of experts. Getting them on board doesn't mean that you have to do whatever they're telling you. It just means that you're approaching your communication strategy in an inclusive, collaborative way. Now, on the point of inclusivity, obviously a big thing in development cooperation. Your strategy should be representative of your team members. Have a look around in your wider communications team. And if it doesn't represent different voices, you better find a way to bring those voices into the team to inform your strategy. That way, you might very well hear very new standpoints. Try to resist the natural tendency to disregard them, especially when they make you a bit uncomfortable. It's a normal feeling when you hear something you're totally not accustomed to. And that's the point of having diverse perspectives in your team on board, bringing in other experiences and thoughts that you're not familiar with. Yeah.